Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a new version of the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. New name coming. All the things coming soon. I am, of course, joined by none other than Heath Mulliken. Uh, are you still technically of the double drop kick at this time? Like that's the question. Like yeah, that's a oh yeah, double drop kick. I got some. I got some uh, episodes. I got to uh, edit and get uploaded. But yeah, double drop kick show forever. Uh, Mark and I get together, have a good time. But I think I told you he has no interest in talking about independent wrestling. So this this show scratches an itch for me. Awesome. That's what we wanted to hear. Uh, look, and if you're looking to scratch your itch, because I look, I look. Heath does a little stuff behind the scenes as well. That stuff will be able to be found on patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod over on the YouTube channel. We're going to have some stuff behind the paywall there. Uh, look, it's, we're going to get creative here. We've discussed some of this off air, right? About some of it's not going to be on the lower tiers. Like some of it's going to be on the higher tiers that you really want to get. If you really want the dirt, that's where it's at. Right. And uh, we're excited about some of that stuff, but, um, Look, I, we talked about doing like a Georgia indie show, and uh, I guess part of the question became, "What are we gonna do? Like, what, <laughs> like how's it? What are we gonna be like? You right. know, what's the plan? Like, what's you know?" Uh, and it's a look. I think we both agree. Like, it's gonna be like a work in progress, and I think that's where we want to start with everybody of saying, "Look, I've done like I've done a Georgia indie talk uh, in another you know indie talk show with Myron. I'm like, look, this one's gonna go down a whole different path. We hope that's our that's our vision. If it's a totally different vision would you agree with that i mean that's yeah and and you know i listen to other you know georgia wrestling podcast and you kind of take from them and i think we're going to be a lot different i think one thing we can promise the listeners and viewers is that we're gonna we're gonna try to watch more georgia wrestling than a lot of these other shows but it is it is humanly impossible right. to cover it all so many promotions in georgia plus a lot of promotions don't have any video, so there's no way for us to watch it. They don't send in re results, so we don't even know what happened. And then some promotions don't do either. There's no video. There's no written results. What are you going to talk about? Well, your poster was nice, and you had so, you know. So I'm hoping that this encourages – we want to talk about you. If you're putting out good content, if you're having good wrestling, if you're a good spot, we want to talk about you. And – this is I. This is not going to be a. Uh, I think you and I both want to talk about every level of Georgia wrestling and not mm -hmm. just a certain group. Right. I mean, look, we, you know, on our on the on the main Tapped Out Wrestling podcast that the, you know the, the national show, as I like to call it, because we have this conversation a lot. Like, yeah, dude, it's a national show. Internet. I mean, like to be blunt, last week I don't know if you saw the numbers. Like Virginia had more downloads and views than any other state in the country. I'm like, it's not a Georgia show. Right. So we discussed like, hey, let's make one. Like, let's do one that's specific to Georgia. By the way, I, I just gut feeling we'll still have like weeks or months or whatever where like it's not, you know, it'll be South Carolina will be the number one show or something like it happens. Crazy as that sounds. Right. Um, but yeah, like there are tiers of wrestling and we discussed that on the award show that we did where there's, you know, all these multiple levels. Um, but I think it's we want and we said like we want to promote like we want to help you get your name mm. out there we've discussed and we'll figure it look again we're figuring it out as we go guys uh we we have a broad vision and we, we, we will tweak it along the way we want to have promoters on we want to have wrestlers on you know and on and on and on like to kind of help promote their product um but i think I've had multiple conversations with people all over the state at this point, like telling them this show was coming. This was our vision. And I think one of the things that it didn't catch them off guard, but I said, look, uh, and I told you that I, I think our, our key thing has to be, we will, we will promote, we'll be positive, but critical and fair. Like that's the yes. other part. Like that's the key thing. I think as long as you're fair, I think most people understand. Yes, I, I think that's one of the big things is giving everybody a fair shot. But also, and we talked about this at length on the award show, is not all wrestling is equal or the same. Correct. And so, you know, don't expect, you know, don't expect us to treat your show like the Super Bowl if it just wasn't that great. Yeah. You know, again, 
but that's just our opinion. It's just two guys' opinion. And uh, at the end of the day, that's that's basically what it is. I think that's the key phrase to take away. Critical, but fair. We're going to try to promote. But at the end of the day, here's the thing. We don't take ourselves so serious <laughs> to the point that we don't understand the fact that we're fans. That's all we are. Yeah, right. It's our perspective. And look, I actually had a conversation with a promoter this morning and said, I love you to death, but there's things that, that y'all do that I don't like. Uh, I'm going to tell you, and as you know, but it's again at the end of the day, it's just my opinion, right? Right. You know, and I think that's it. We're not trying to, you know, tell everybody our ways the way. We're just saying like, hey, from my perspective, this is what I didn't like, and that's kind of what we're going to think. And look, does anything scream that more than the awards? You know, in Georgia. Let me tell you. You and I both were at Mel Kuyper levels of being wrong about these <laughs> awards. I don't know, other than Diana Michelle and the commentary team, we were so we were missed. I had to go back and I listened. I got Bryce for mail correct. I got okay. uh, announcer, commentary, referee, and that might have been about it. So as somebody so conveniently pointed out, so you didn't get any of the big ones right. Right. And I said, I disagree with your comments because I love announcers. I love commentary and I love me some referees. Right. And by the way, and Bryce Cannon, male performer of the year, kudos. But anyway. Two um, time, two time male performer of the year. Yeah. Now. Um, I, I, I want to catch here because this is, this is where it's going to get. <laughs> Congratulations to, you know, everybody who won. Yes, they earned every vote they got, and I'm, we're not knocking that in the least. Um, we wanted to make sure everybody understands anything that this goes. This falls into the critical but fair line of where we're about to head down on these awards. And by the way, I heard a lot of great things about the banquet. Mm. Can't call it a gala because it was in a wild week. That's just me. But right. it was it was it was still like everybody was like, "Hey, we had a great time. It was awesome." You know, and like, look, what's what? I posted it this week. What did I say? Two things can be true, right? And I, I tried to stress that. And I think we're, the where we're going with that is I can be happy for everybody who won. I can tell you, like, I'm happy for Naja and everything that they pulled off for, you know, for the awards thing. I totally can. That doesn't necessarily mean, oh, well, then everything is great and perfect. That's just no, not the case. No, that's right. I I agree with you. I think there were definitely – some people who won awards, I, I think of uh, Skrill, I think of uh, Huckabee, people who have worked really hard for a long time and who who won awards this year. And listen, it doesn't matter if somebody voted for you because they were paid to or because they were free. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You won. You won the vote. As the rule, as it is set up, you won the vote and congratulations are in order. I think, uh, and, and I, to exactly what you said, the awards uh, matter. The more the awards can mean a lot, at the same time not meaning a lot at all. Because if there were, and I know we'll get into this in a minute, let's say there were 120 people that voted, and a winner got less than 30 percent of the vote. You are the wrestler of the year. You are elected. Whatever the award is, you are the winner, but only 30% of your peers. I, we don't, and we don't know the totals. We don't know the percentages. I'm just saying, now, um, we, we might, they said that those might come out. They did do them last year. I, and I actually wanted for reasons we'll discuss in a minute. I wanted to see those. I really, really did. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah. So, um, but I'm, I'm right there with you. And it's, um, <laughs> I, yes, I, I, I'm rocking the final. I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but yeah. it's um because it's like, I I again can be super happy. Look, I I jokingly said to somebody, I don't know that other than Skrilla, <laughs> other than Skrilla, I don't think anybody promoted Skrilla harder than me because I'm a massive fan of the guy. But when right. we did our like when we did our picks, I didn't pick him. I picked somebody else. Right. And it wasn't. And and, and here's the great thing. Because I think of that relationship, he understood. Like he he got it. 
Like, yeah. Okay. It's like he's not. I don't. You know. But I, you, your words, not mine. Like, did some? Is the words? There's just a different criteria across the board. This is not specifically to Skrillas. Right. right. Like, it's like. But again, our opinions and our takes were just that. Right. It's like if if I were voting, because by the for the record, did you vote? I did not vote. I did not either. Um, we just said if we voted, th- like that was literally our award show. If we voted, this is who mm-hmm. we would have voted for. I-, I didn't think it was much more complicated than that. <laughs> to and to your next point, had you and I voted, it may have changed some of the categories. Just two votes. Should I go there now? Are we ready for that? T- so, I. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Like, Because here's the part that it was like, I, here's the hardest part to fix. Um, we went over some things about the, the, the voting system and how it works and how it doesn't work and all that stuff on the award special. Go back in the archives, check that out if you want to hear that. You can see how wrong we were on, on our picks. But one of the things is the reason I, I was... I had two, I, like I had three conversations about this already this morning, which is crazy, right? That literally my first phone call started at eight o'clock. And like literally, it was all day. It was I've been doing this. I get that m- more people voted than ever. Awesome, that is a great thing in my opinion. However, when you also find out, again, preface, we're happy for everybody who won. They earned their spots again because that's the way the system works. Nothing taken away from those guys. But if you hear. There was a contingent of people that just didn't vote. So I called some of these people and asked, hey, did you vote? No. Did you vote? No. When I reached 13 people that I know are eligible to vote who said they didn't vote, the problem that I have then is, okay, I'm going to ask you a question off guard in a minute. I said, if 130 people voted, by the way, I think last year it was like 120, something, 130, I don't know, I can't remember. Um, If if 130 people voted, 13 more people is like 10%. Right. That's a significant swing in the potential votes, right. especially when we're being told it's as close as they've ever been. Like they were separated by two or three votes. Literally, those not, because by the way, I do know for a fact, I asked specifically on a couple of them. I was like, hey, I'm just curious. Had you voted, who would you have voted for this? Who would you have voted for that? Who would you vote? And I asked them like three or four of them. From my understanding, Completely changes the winners in some boat. Now, don't be mad. The analogy I was given, there was a mayor in a town who won the election for mayor with 930-something votes. 37,000 people live in that city. (laughs) Right, right. Now, the flaw is you only could draw X amount of people to vote because that's really poor turnout. Hence, I'm coming back to how do you figure out how to fix that part of it either you need because you need more people voting period you need everybody voting because at that point you're arguing there's some players that don't care correct correct you know i always said like do you remember our conversation about hey do you let some fans vote and do you have the committee as part of the, if it's all weighted and then the, the boys get to vote, the peers get to vote and that's weighted a certain amount. Cause here's my thing. 13 people not voting should not completely sway your vote. It did. But if had you had 200 fans vote and it, even it weighted, it's not going to swing it as much as the, it, that it did. Right. So right. I don't know. I, you tell me like that. That's my question. Like, I don't, I don't quite get it. So if listeners, viewers want to know the kind of stuff we're going to be putting on Patreon, like when I wake up in the middle of the night, I think about things like, hey, if I were going to start a voting from scratch, how would I do that? That's the kind of stuff I ramble about on on the Patreon that we're going to be up, uploading. But yeah, I, I think you asked the right question. And to me, I'm a big relationship guy. And I think it's very clear that some ha- some time in the last couple of years, there's been a relationship issue between Georgia wrestling history and many players in the Georgia wrestling scene. And if it were me, 
And I want, and again, I think the awards matter, but I would want them to matter to even more people. And so how do you rebuild some relationships? How do you talk to some of these, these 13 or more who did not vote and say, Hey, what's, is it, you know, what's the re you're not going to please everybody. Let's just go ahead and say that. Um, but it, it would be, there's something when, when people don't feel good about the system or whatever, that's fixable. You know, and so that's what I would, you know, I'd, I'd kind of love to, to see that. I just want everybody to get along, even though it's, it's a lot more entertaining when everybody's not getting along and talking trash. Yeah. Cause I mean, look, when we're talking sheer volumes of numbers, I came up, look, I had a conversation with somebody and it was awesome. It was literally like, it, it, I, there's nothing could have meant more real. Hmm. If, if you're like, Hey, we mobilized our guys and we, you know, we, push the vote and you know that's why we won and i look by the way kudos that's the way the system works kudos yes i'm yes. not disagreeing with you however it was pointed out to me there's one man in the state that if he got motivated and he pushed his you know he pushed to, that he really wanted to sweep i'm sorry to say this i i, I never would have thought i could say but it's true matt griffin brings in more talent like that nobody else uses across the state. Cause the rest of y'all, y'all are sharing a lot of the same pool of talent. So you, their votes are being chopped up into whoever they like that month when they vote. Cause here's the thing, the guy that loved you in January might like, he can't stand you in like November, December. So he's going to vote for your, for the guy that you're against. Right. You have no loyalties across that and uh, across a year, but Matt Griffin brings in so many talents from out of state, like national talents and da da da. And he could literally just be like, hey, man, I'm going to bring you in. Because, look, he's got the relationships. He's got the IWTV relationship. Vote for us for promotion of the year, promoter of the year, booker of the year. We could sweep. And for, for, for the record, folks, he's going to crush all y'all. <laughs> if he if he totally was motivated and wanted to win, you don't stand a chance. Right. If he decided – hey, and I have never heard or seen – Matt Griffith say anything about the awards. I've never seen him say anything plus or minus. Uh, he's just kind of stayed out of the the argument. But if he decided to, you're absolutely right. One one thing about action wrestling and independent wrestling is a lot like the old theater troops. You'd have a group of people, and they 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 knew their roles, and they could do different performances, and they would just travel the country together. Mm -hmm. And that's how independent wrestling is. You'll have a group of guys and they, it may not be coordinated, but there's groups of guys that work the same shows together. And there's a lot of similarities. And with Matt Griffin, that that's, he's got, you know, his core, like four or five people. But then that other part is just rotating and rotating. And you can see people at action wrestling. You're not going to see anywhere else. Right. And look, I mean, it's like, because I think ours, like my thing, like we joked about it. Um, Booker of the year, I'm like, Matt does a lot of shows, dude. I mean, like, come on, he's running multiple shows. And I, and it's, it's a totally different creature. Um, but look, at the end, um, you had some stuff about the Carolinas and Georgia and, you know. Yeah, it seems like the last couple of years, that a lot of the smaller promotions have taken a bigger interest in the awards, especially in the Carolinas. And so there are people, there were people who were finalists that have wrestled in the Carolinas for a long time on, you know, what I would call kind of the lower level shows. And it seems like more and more of those people are kind of pooling together and, having an impact in the nominations and in the voting. And I, I found that I find that very interesting because a lot of these people, a lot of these promotions weren't even on the radar uh, a few years ago. Um, I, at least I've, I've definitely seen that in the Carolinas and, and, and I think in Georgia too. Um, the question now to all of the winners, North Carolina and South Carolina and Georgia, is a lot of you been were chasing this, hungry for it. And now you got it. Are you going to be like the dog at the racetrack 
that once it catches that rabbit, it, it, it don't race anymore because it knows, oh, okay, that was kind of pointless. Um, not saying it's pointless, but you've got what you came for. What, what's next? T to Skrilla, what are you, you going to do to top that now? Yeah, you got because this year now you have to be better. Because here's what I told I told somebody this last year, uh, or no, two years ago. They won an award. And I said, now you have to be better even if you don't win next year. Like, you still have to be able to look yourself in the mirror. Because, again, it goes back to, uh, I will stand by my statement. What What is it? It's a broken record at this point. If you cared in January 1st, you should care in December 31st. If you didn't care, you shouldn't care at the end. Like, my stance on the awards is what they are, right? Like, we like them just because they give us something to talk about. Uh, but if you're if you're a wrestler January 1st and you didn't care and you win at the end and you're like, Woo! I'm like, dude, you didn't care. And, you know, February, right. you didn't care. You actually trash talk it. Be consistent. That's all I tell people. Be consistent. If you didn't care, don't act like you are and vice versa. You can't one time tell me they don't matter. Then you tell me they do matter. And then you don't win. And then you don't. Then they don't matter. Consistency. That's all I'm asking for. However. Here's my last bone of contention on the award. I know you probably got some more stuff, but I want to say this. Yeah, yeah. Two things can be true. This is going to be a developing theme for Nick. I just, I, I think it's going to be my new catchphrase. Two things can be true. I promise you. I appreciate Pro South, Amy and Ace Haven, and what they do as much as anybody, because I understand the fact how hard it must be to book fifty-two weeks of shows a year. Can't even fathom. I can't wrap my head around it. I have tipped my cap every chance I've could on our on our show. Anytime I can, I say, look, they do something that nobody else is doing. I can't even imagine the pressure that it you know, that's just on them constantly to continually book. And by the way, not just book, deal with talent coming in on a weekly basis and all of those things. I it, look, it's it, I promise you nobody can. Check. That is true. However, look, and I understand the, like, the pushback and all the negativity, you know, of like, dude, it, geography states you're in Alabama. If it's the Georgia Wrestling History Awards, they're not in Georgia. Look, Saul Wright, who I don't know, I'm telling you that already. I, I You know why I don't know him? Because he's never wrestled in Georgia. He stated it on his Facebook page. Right. He was the runner-up for Rookie of the Year in the Georgia Wrestling History Awards, and he never wrestled a match in the state of Georgia the entire year. <laughs> I'm like, that makes no sense to me. However, if you're going to do that, that's fine. Then change your name. Right. Southern Wrestling History, Southeastern Wrestling History. Come up with a better name than I did, because <laughs> that's not very difficult. Hey, how about this? Go to ChatGPT prompt it to tell them to come up with a name for a wrestling blog, you know, slash whatever, um, that covers the Southeastern, you know, region of Georgia and pro wrestling, independent wrestling. It'll just rattle you off a bunch. Pick one. If nobody's that good at picking a name, there you go. It's an easy solution. By the way, cause I mean, I'm pretty sure the last time I checked Georgia wrestling history is probably not trademarked. So if you're not really building, you know, like, Oh, the leg, you know, look, if WWF, the World Wrestling Federation could become World Wrestling. And I know that's not as drastic of a change. No, it's one word. It's literally the same. Right, right, right. Do they even own a GWH? Is, do they own any type of domain? Because the website's a blog spot, which that's the only blog spot blog that I still know that even exists. I can't yeah. even log into my old blogger blog spot account uh so yeah, i don't anyways. think so i mean but no i, I don't know and but that's what i said look invest get g you know gwh.com or gwh.georgia wrestling something if you're gonna but at this point i would say go all in and just shift around. if you're covering tennessee you're covering alabama you're covering south carolina now's the change man like i get people are skeptical like you're erasing history i'm like man dude i totally disagree you're growing right no, that's right. It's a growth step. Like, growth steps happen. The, the only issue is if it, it expands, man, it gets – Can you now you got to cover all of Alabama. And here's the thing. Is it 
and there's been a lot of criticism of Georgia wrestling history. They can only do so much. We can only do so much. Mm-hmm. There's so many shows. Shows don't if they don't have footage, if they don't post results, you you don't you don't know. So so let's close let's close the the chapter on 2023. What are you looking forward to in 2024? Things are cha- look every year. Things are changing. Um, there's things that we look forward to. Uh, look, I'm excited. Look, we the other day we talked about Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling's coming back. Um, it's a, clearly associated with a nightmare factory. Then they throw out they're bringing Matt Cardona, and like literally minutes before we recorded, they announced Ricky Starks is going right. to be there. I'm right, like, right. All right, guys, buckle up, Buttercups. Like this is going to be a Somebody probably needs to be paid attention to, right? If they're going to bring in these kind of names. Now, I don't know if it's consistently going to be people this level, but, hey, it's a heck of a start. How does a show in Georgia that has that level of talent, we don't know any matches yet, how's that already, and I don't want to get ahead, how's that already not going to be a contender for show of the year? Just by the level of talent. Yeah. That's on it. I mean, think Uh, about this. Their main event could be Matt Cardona versus Ricky Starks. I don't know that it's, I'm not saying it is, but it could be. Right, right, right. Um, I think, by the way, I got a gut feeling. I know who's going to work that show at times from time to time, too. QT Marshall. I'm guessing it's going to be on that card at some point. Yes. If, if, if he has publicly stated he wants to kind of give wrestling another shot, uh, you would think he would book himself. Correct. Um, I'm looking forward to going to more shows this year. You know, we we went to UWF last Sunday. I was I was looking forward to going to several UWF shows this year, and the announcement this this week that they're shutting down and uh, there's no longer rest. You know, wrestling's not going to be in that building anymore. So that that was kind of disappointing. But I am looking forward to uh, more wrestling shows, getting to introduce to more talent, um, watching more wrestling. Uh, and just seeing, just seeing how Georgia wrestling uh, continues to grow. You know, do you remember a time when there were so many shows uh, going over five hundred people? Just this yeah. month. Yeah. Um, you look back several years. You know when uh, when Anarchy and and you know Southern Fried were kind of like ruling the roost. They were. I don't even. I mean. Anarchy couldn't even hold 500. Minutes. Right. That's what I say. They can't really, they couldn't just physically the building. Um, but it, I'm interested to see who can keep that up. Is that, you know, which promotion can make the right pivots to maintain their momentum and not just pop a crowd, but build a consistent audience through the whole year. And, and you know, one of the things is a lot of brewery shows popping up. Uh, we'll mention one here in a minute. Those, those are, you kind of capped, you're kind of capped, uh, in your attendance there. So I, I'm just looking forward to seeing some new stuff and just seeing who takes it to the next level. Yeah. I'm look, I'm excited to see like what, you know, we talked about like what we're looking to do here. I'm excited to like potentially bring on those talents and those promoters right. and like help, you know, help kind of help, you know, just kind of get that community, that name out there. Uh, hopefully, especially like, look, I, there's ones out there now that I know are, youtube centric mm-hmm. and look I, I like you, you know you know i'm not trying to toot our own hurry here but to toot the my argument to people was always go to youtube our show's a little more national mm-hmm. we'll try like a guy in texas he can watch youtube and watch your promotion you know if you got your stuff on youtube and he can become a you know a southern fried fan and live in Texas because he can't come to a show because he right. lives so far away. I'm like, that's kind of the what we hoped for, and that's the kind of stuff I'm excited for about this. But, yeah, I our, our commitment to each other was, hey, look, we got to get IWTV. We got to have, mm. you know, the YouTube subscription, like, you know, subscribe to the channels that show, like Southern Fried, et cetera. Um, there's one I got to let out to you know. I found out there is another one coming to YouTube. Yes. Uh, but, uh, but also, like, look, hey, we need to commit to each other that we're going to, Hit SCA on a Friday yeah. night. 
we're going to hit an East Denali show, you know, on a Saturday night, or, you know, we're going to hit a OSWA show or, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, Hey, I know I love Southern fried, but there might be a Saturday that I have to pick, you know, another show because we right. want to try to be educated, you know, enough to like have those conversations. And like you said, yeah. some of them don't have YouTube. Some of them don't have results posted anywhere. And without any of that, how do you, how are you supposed to know? Right. The, uh, and I, and I hope, I hope promoters and wrestlers will hear us like send them to us tapped out pod at gmail.com. Like send them, um, you know, send them to us. We'll talk about it. Uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to the Southern state show this Sunday. I'm excited for that, uh, to see a new promotion and a new, new place. So, uh, lots to look forward to this year. I agree. Well, I'll tell you, look, that's Sunday this week. Um, I know you can't make the trip down on Friday, but I will tell you, we plugged it on our, our uh, regular show, but we're also going to tell everybody this Friday, we will be in Canton at the Action Building right there at Southern Honor Wrestling. Attention wrestling fans, join us live at the Action Building in Canton, Georgia, Friday, February 2nd for SHW 59. The undisputed IWTV Independent Wrestling World Championship will once again be defended inside of a Southern Honor ring as the atrocity cruel defends against the mysterious and enigmatic TNA star Suicide. We'll hear from the people's captain, Gunnar Miller, and witness the in-ring debut of the 7'3 giant known as Chosen. And in our main event, it's Tag Team Turmoil. Four teams enter the ring, and after one has been eliminated, the hierarchy will join the match to defend their SHW Tag Team titles in Fatal four-way action. Plus, Jake the Snake, Legacy Champion, Chip Day, Cody Fluffman, Kyle Matthews, Adam Priest, and more. Tickets start at just $15 and go on sale at the door the night of the show beginning at 5 p.m. Doors open at 7, bell time at 8. As always, kids 10 and under are free. Come see firsthand why we are SHW and this is our wrestling. That's right, man. This Friday, we will be up, me, I, me and Myron, I guess, will be up at Southern Honor. We got to get you down for another Southern Honor show, man. That's the biggest one on the next one, right? Yes. It's uh, it's just figuring out how to get down there on on, on a Friday. I, I will definitely make it happen. I have a, uh, I am, I'm already booked for this uh, Friday for an event. Uh, so, you know, one thing I noticed on there, and we just talked about how the crowds are growing. But the the crowds are growing even with wrestling ticket prices going up. So I, I find that very interesting, and, and kudos to everybody who's drawing crowds and hopefully making good money. That that's the big part is the making the money, and uh, that's that's you know I always tell people when they get in the wrestling business that's the biggest question is can you make money. But you had some more. What are some of the big questions you have for twenty twenty four as well? So it was just announced in the last couple of weeks, uh, viral pro wrestling has had to postpone their next show. They've, they've had an issue. They've run there at the Sweetwater Gym. There's other places they've run. I got a notif- or I got a message that they had booked a different building um, in Augusta or near Augusta. They normally run in Thompson. So what's the future of viral pro wrestling? They run every other month. They're not running in February. Are they coming back in April? Because mm-hmm. they've been running that big angle with the front office. And so who, who knows what's going to happen there? Kind of hand in hand with that, you have a new promotion launching tomorrow night. We're uh, Thursday night of this week. Uh, Phoenix Wrestling Experience. The, they're running their first show. They said today online they've already sold 120 tickets. It's a brewery show. They're also opening a school. They've got their LLC, so they're like taking this pretty seriously. So I'm interested to see. Um sometimes one thing goes away and another thing pops up. So I I'm interested to see, uh, you know, you had UWF, uh, that's closed down. They're selling their ring. Is somebody in Georgia going to buy that ring? It's almost tax time, Nick. And are we going to see some good tax time wrestling shows? I know who would like to have it. I don't know if that's going to come through or not. I know there were, there were some conversations there. Um, but look, you again, big questions. I'll give you one. Does everybody need to be concerned? All these big time players, you know, you, we we've already talked about them. Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling. It's one of those like, do you, relationships, you know, make certain things happen. Look, 
I, I say it about Matt Griffin. That's why he can get some of the names he gets. It's mm-hmm. why Gary and Dylan get some of the names they get, right? It's like relationships with people they know. Um, last time I checked, Cody and QT know a lot of people. I mean, and that's a, I mean, I think they have all the potential in the world. By the way, being a Nightmare Factory show essentially is what I got the vibe of. Mm-hmm. They'll be able to get some of their, you know, their train the trainees now look i always want to be clear people sometimes i think lose like when they hear trainees they don't grasp that like this might be a guy who's been in the business for a year or two and now he's really seriously going to invest right and going to one of those camps and then get on these shows like it's not always a guy who's been in the he's been in the business for six weeks right he's a trainee so sometimes a trainee show or as you like to say all trainee shows aren't equal Right. Uh, you know, right. if you're a trainee at one place and you're a trainee, you know, quote unquote, at the Nightmare Factory, it's a little bit of a difference. Yes, especially in your look, your physique, your ability to afford going to a tanning bed. Um, if I were a wrestler in Georgia, a young wrestler, I would have already sent Turnbuckle a message. I would have already sent them some video. I would already said, how can I help? I will work for free. Do you need help setting up a ring? Do you need me to sell cotton candy? How can I help? How can I support? I would all, cause here, this, this is a weeknight show, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a weeknight show. show. So you're not booked. And so anyone who's not there helping set up chairs, trying to, rub elbows. I, I think you'd be out of your mind not to do that. Look, I reserved us two tickets. I was like, dude, I look, I we 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 slept on the fact that we thought we'd just go down to action and they sold out at one of their brewery shows. So I was like, all right, I don't want to miss it. And great thing I did because this morning, lo and behold, they say they're all gone. Right. Like turnbuckle, all the tickets are gone. Um how about next show they charge and we see what happens, right? Like let's right. Get it. um like I, I'm not sure but that is to me one of the biggest questions like in one year here it's not a, this isn't a spoiler this ain't a prediction my question is in one year because they're starting literally in february Mm -hmm. could they become promotion promoter or anything of the year for for these awards that we're talking about literally in less than one calendar year because here's the thing matt cardona can uh vote in the awards now ricky starks will be able to vote in these awards now yeah well, and what's crazier, they would have actually wrestled in yes. the, 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 within the state lines yeah. of Georgia. So that's a little, yeah, that's a little different. So um, those are some of our biggest questions. Um, now we're going to talk about some hypotheticals, some things that we're looking at doing. Like one of the things we discussed doing was, hey, every month do we do a top three? You know, um, so do you want to explain kind of the concept a little bit of what we were thinking? Yeah. So when we did the award show, we said, hey, you know what, we would kind of stick to three for each category and it made me think one thing that's missing from the independent wrestling talk is okay it's february who's your top three for wrestler of the year um and instead of starting those conversations in november we have an ongoing conversation through the almost like you know it's the the ncaa rankings uh, man, he, you know, so here, here's our top three wrestlers. Here's our top. We wouldn't do every category every month, but, uh, Hey man, we're in, we're in may. What's the top three shows that you've seen this year? Or what's the top three promos? I you know, I don't know. We're at the end of January. I couldn't name you a, a promo. I haven't seen a promo that I would consider for promo, uh, of the year yet. Although last year's winner, w- the promo was in January, I think. And it was, yeah. I, it was great. It was a good, very well. Um, it was more of a promo video than a in ring promo, but kudos uh, to those guys. Um, so yeah. And, and I think this is something we would love to interact where, where, Hey, you know, we announce a week before we record, Hey, we're going to do our top three of these categories. Send us your top three. Yeah. Um, I, I was almost thinking like, is there going to be a staple, like, you know, wrestler, female tag team or something like that. Right. Like, hey, every, you know, or feud or match. Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, is there a staple that's, that every show is discussed? And then, or sometimes it's like, hey, look, 
nothing happened last month to cause us to change. Our top three is this, boom, move right. on. Right. You know, but if something happens, you're like, Hey, we had this happen, this happened. And that's it. so tapped out pod at gmail.com. Let us like, do you, cause there's no way we can go through every category, um, you know, every single show. And especially like if it's monthly, you know, by, cause here's right. the thing, you're only going to be able to do it monthly in the sense of you're doing it outside of the month. So that's really all you can do. And, and, so like we're going to do this in February. If a promotion's not running in February, they're not going to be in my top three promotions for that month. Or, Just because, or, or, or uh, like, you know, hypothetical, like if viral was going to, they were still running, like hypothetical virals running in February. They don't run in January. Well, can they really be up for promotion of the year or show it? I mean, they didn't run in for January. Right. Right. Like so they're out of the conversation until otherwise. And, and like so far this year, looking at different results, I don't know again. And there's a lot of shows I don't know about, but I'm saying of the shows that I followed, the shows I saw results for, there were only a handful of women's matches so far in Georgia. Again, that I am aware of. Mm -hmm. So like, would we want to do a women's ranking for, for at January that point, at that point? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to hear from other people. And again, we could get to the end of the year and it's, and our criteria be completely off and us completely miss again. Yeah. And not know what's like, we're just, we're just out of the loop. Right. We're again, we're just fans sharing their opinions. We, we don't. Yeah. Anyway. Um, one of the things I want to do on a, on a, every show, you know, monthly, if we do bi-weekly, it wouldn't fall into that category, but, um, I almost thought like the thought process of being if it was bi weekly, mm -hmm. one show is one vibe, and then of course like the first show outside of a month is kind of like all these category type things, and it's a right. So it might not be. It's almost like the news and the behind the scenes stuff is the mid month show, and then the right. outside of the month uh, might that might be kind of eventually how it falls. We'll see. But one that I like is um, I look. I've stole some of these from some. There's another yeah. podcast that I absolutely love. And uh, one of them is like, you know, who won the movie? But my thing was, who won January? Like, who won February? Every month, it's like, who won the month? And it doesn't have to be a wrestler. It could be a wrestler. It could be a promotion. It could be a promo. Like, anything. Like, we can literally pull it from anything. It's like, like taking the, the biggest takeaway from January was this wrestler, this promotion. And so mm -hmm. I think that kind of gives it a lot of leeway in that category. Um, and look, we'll start with... Like, let's say who won January. We're not outside of January. I mean, completely. Right. But nobody else runs in January because we're recording literally like the last day of the month. Right. So, you know, this, the conversations with, and I'm going to give you a couple options and we'll discuss them. Like I brought up like, hey, is it IWE? They had war games. Uh, it's the big angle. You know, they lost, you know, Tim and Josh lost control of the company, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or was it Anarchy? People forget because that show ran like the first. See, this is what we talk about. This is why this has to be done. People forget literally we're at the end of the month of January and people have already seemed to forget on January the 6th, Anarchy ran Monroe, you know, in the Southern Fried Building at a massive crowd. Great return, great card, loaded top to bottom, capped off by a ladder match between Judas and Nick Halen. I'm like, dude. But we forget things literally within 20 days. We've forgotten it. So, and then, you know, uh, go ahead. You had something? No, I, yeah. Like, uh, was that the largest show in Anarchy history? Uh, I think they've run some other buildings in the past. I would have to check, I, I, but I'm not 100% sure, but it could have been because they didn't right. ever, they've never ran anything inside a landmark that that was that big. No, 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 no. That would have been, that would have broken even more loss. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, one that brought, I go ahead. Yep. One I brought up was um, Classic City. Classic City had they even been around two years yet, but they they just had their fifth straight sellout at the brewery. They've had they ha they made some noise in the awards. Um, so do you have to put them in there? I think one thing that I'm it, it doesn't take a lot to get me excited when it comes to wrestling it's anybody's game right now. Mm -hmm. Like we're in January there. You got a brand new promotion. We just mentioned turnbuckle. They could run the table this year. They could 
knock everybody out of the water. Um, the, I mean, yeah, I mean, between these three, um, I, you know, I lean IWE, not necessarily because of the war games. They just, they just won everything. They won promotion of the year. I mean, they, they had a great month. They sold out their, they, they have finally sold out that American Legion. Um, I mentioned on the award show, what are they going to do? Okay. What are you going to do? Top this? Have you reached your pinnacle? Um, right. You brought it up. Like you can't, you, it's a sellout. You turned people away. You can't sell. I mean, I get it. You could do a handful of tickets. You could shuffle a couple seats. Right. You could tell me 560. Okay. I, you shuffled a couple seats. You can't tell me 600 now. Right. It's a sellout. You turn people away. You can't grow anymore. It's either time to you've maxed out or you got to move. That's that's our take. That's, that You have no choice but that. Right. And eventually, if you max out at that number, typically things start kind of start shrinking. My question for Anarchy, are the, what do they have planned for February? Like what's the consistent plan for Anarchy – moving forward are they going every other month so I'm, I'm curious to you know i'm curious to see you know where that goes yeah i, mean, I hope i don't know if i have an answer for this nick of who won um January. i think i think i agree with your initial gut feeling i think it's got to be iwe um not so here's the thing not solely based on by the way i say this about a lot of cards and people take offense by it and i'm like Okay, WWE books this way, so you shouldn't be offended by when I say you're like a one match or a two match card. Mm. That's a normal thing, and that's not shitting on anybody lower on the card. That's literally like if 550 people showed up, I guarantee you 500 of them showed up to see the War Games match. Mm. It's happened, right? Nobody. And look, it's Naja and uh, Chad Skywalker. You know, classic. You know, they, it was a great match. But that's not who they paid. The, 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 they paid to see the war games. Right. So you had your war games. You had your big, you know, storyline coming coming along. And then look, with all fairness, we had a whole segment about the awards, and they did really well there. Therefore, I got to go with them. They won January, right? I mean, I think that's 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 about as fair as you can call it. I don't think you can go in a different direction at that point. Yeah, I think if I to to me. Man, really, I mean, IWE's got a target on their back. That's that's who I mean, again, they had they have they've sold out great attendance, great, you know, great job at the awards. And um their social media is growing. And uh I mean, they have really come a long, long way. And I was I was at that war game show. They they have they got a lot of room for improvement, uh, production wise. Um, but I, th I think, I don't know if I said this on the award show or another place where I recorded, there wasn't a bad wrestler on that card. I mean, they, they, they had a talent that was a talent filled show. Um, Naja and Chad Skywalker, that was a great opening match that could have been semi main event. At a lot of promotions, uh, you take that match, you take that opening match, and you take it to another show, a smaller show. People would lose their minds. Right. They would lose their minds. Um, so I, I guess we're agreeing, man. IWE, they win January. It's not an award though because you don't get anything. You yeah. just, it's just two guys saying you won the month. Hypothetically, who won the month? Yeah, what does that mean? Not much, right? Right. Uh, look, but it's – before we, you know, get to our wrap-up, I want to remind everybody, look, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you, you know, you're liking it, subscribing, turning your notifications on, all that good stuff. Right there, the, the handle on Twitter uh, – on YouTube is at Tapped Out Pod. makes it simple because that's pretty much our handle everywhere. Um, look, we decided at the last minute we are going to add this to the uh, podcast feed. And again, whether it's Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, anywhere. Look, I get it. Google Podcast is going away. But until they do, we're there as well. 
Uh, but pretty much, like I said, anywhere and everywhere there is a podcast platform, we are on it. So when people ask, as Myron always likes to joke it, when people say, hey, what, what are you on? We go, everything. It's that right. simple. I almost promise you, if it's a podcast platform, just listen and we, you know, search us on there and you'll find us there. So, Do you ever, uh, sometimes I'll be you know, Googling and I'll find our show on places I didn't even know existed. Just because yep. they're kind of, you know, arbitrary or not arbitrary. They're like just feed sourcing. Yeah. And I thought, oh, well, we're on. Well, this. actually, um, so with ours, I'm fully aware it's Lipson.com. Right. They they distributed out pretty much to everywhere for you. So that's right. why, like I said, I'm like, I didn't even know that was a podcast platform. <laughs> right. And that that's how that's how ours is uh, too. But I mean, it's like every week I'm like, what is what is this? What is it? But yeah. like what no matter what kind of phone or computer you have. Uh, you can watch or listen to this show, which is a very exciting thing. Yeah. I, I'm going to leave you with a question because uh, it's something I literally thought of while I was doing that. Questions for people to send us, tappedoutpod at gmail.com. And I'm going to ask you your answer before we go. Does tap, uh, you know, does Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling get the pushback of they're bigger than if they're, if they're bringing in Cardona's and Ricky Starks and Wardlow and they're bringing all these guys in? Does the pushback on the awards, you know, do they get the, well, you're too big. Like, you are you don't count because you're using all these names coming. Lucha Lucha. They don't count because they're too big and they, you know, da da da, da whatever. So, does Turnbuckle fall into that? Now, listen, by the way, I don't think I'm going to disclose anything here. I don't think QT and Cody care if they win Georgia Wrestling History Awards. And that's not, by the way, that's not a knock on Georgia Wrestling History Awards. That's just a saying. I just don't think that's really a priority for them. I'm going to have to disagree with you. I heard from a very reliable source that as Cody was waiting for his, his music to hit for the Royal rumble, he was in the back. Multiple wrestlers were going to him. They're trying to go over their spots and Cody was following the results of the awards banquet. He was trying to find out he was following social media. He was yeah. very consumed. He was totally consumed with it. Uh, and then, um, I, that's just what I heard. Those are what my sources are saying. The source uh, brothers came out anonymous, <laughs> you know, that guy kind of, <laughs> undisclosed, you know, I get it. They came out in a uh, full force, but they're not booking anybody in Georgia can book Matt Cardona. If they have the money, listen, I full disclosure, I had a promotion that I was talking to told me, told me personally, they were bringing Matt Cardona in. They hadn't inked the deal yet. And then when they saw he's coming in for free, they're like, well, good thing we didn't ink the deal already. Right, right. They're like, well, we're they're going to pay to buy a ticket from us when literally, you know, a month before or so they can go see him for free. If Matt Cardona was drawing for you, there went your draw. I mean, you know, I want to go see him for the second time. And instead of being free, I want to go see him and I want to pay $20 to see him. But if, but if those shows are a distance away, uh, I, I think, and, and someone pointed this out to me the other day, I think people like you and I who follow re the independent wrestling broadly, most fans, they follow one show or one wrestler and they don't, they have no idea there. There's a majority of, there's a lot of wrestling fans in East and Ollie that don't even know turnbuckle championship wrestling. What's that? Yes. Dusty yeah. Rhodes. It's nightmare factory. What's that? We don't, they don't know. Yeah. I'll take uh, it to the nth degree further. There are fans. I literally have people tell me because they're WWE, AEW fans, mostly WWE fans. I'll be blunt. That mm -hmm. tell me, wait, they do like minor league wrestling. Yes, like where? Yes. And I'm like, dude, you literally live like ten minutes from a show. They they run it like ten minutes up the road. Yes, and they don't know. So yeah, as friend of the show, Gary Lamb says, promote, 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 promote. Right. Because right. if you think you're over promoting, promote some more because there's a whole base that has no clue that you're even there. And I no, think that's, that's we want to be a, another tool for that purpose going forward. Use us as a tool to try to get your promotions name out there. Whether you pick up a fan on your YouTube channel, IWTV, wherever your broadcast or whatever, uh, look, anything helps. That's what I try to tell people. Let us help. Help us help you. Like, let us help. That's yes. Like, uh, Yes. Yes. So, Reach out to, we, you know, uh, we literally, I mean, you and I are pretty nice guys. We'll talk about anybody. Yeah. 
and that happens on a regular basis. I try to catch up with it. And you know us. We you, we did it at all, any shows we go to. We try to catch up with some of the talents after the shows and, you know, go pitch some ideas and all that kind of stuff. So, look, that's what we want to be for you guys. We want to be here to try to help. If, if you have no interest, we respect that. So be it. I mean, like, I totally get it. There's Look, I've I have built relationships up over – it's been over seven years now. I'm like, look, I'm going to, you know, if those people want to use it, like, clearly, if you watch this entire episode, there's people that are like, hey, run a commercial for us. Right. Run a commercial for us. I got no problems. If you have a high quality, you know, video commercial for your show, send it to me. Post it on Facebook. I'll steal it off of Facebook. I don't care because that's generally <laughs> what I do. I literally just download it from Facebook. It's not that complicated, guys. Help right. us help you. And, you know, look, we're excited about where this can go. I know yep. we're, we're running a little long and I got to get you out of here, but uh, anything else before we get out of here, man? No, I'm excited. I think this first show is a good sign of things to come. And I, I'm, I'm very excited and I appreciate the opportunity. I'm very grateful. Well, if that's all you got, man, what's the old saying, brother? If I've got nothing and you've got nothing, what time is it? It's time to tap out. <laughs>